and welcome to this month's Wild World of Wounds. This month, wound patient nutrition, lab assessment with the use of pre-albumin. So we've heard of the use of pre-albumin, but what's the half-life? How is it recommended it's used? What can affect the level? What can make it go up or down? We're going to go through that today. So what is pre-albumin? Pre-albumin is a hepatic protein. It's used to assess the degree of malnutrition. And it's an early indicator and may allow for faster interventions by medical staff than some of the other markers that are used. It correlates also with patient outcomes. So protein malnutrition, let's talk a little bit about that. Protein and calorie malnutrition alter insulin, growth hormone, cortisol levels. Uh, it can deplete mineral stores. And malnutrition can have a profound effect on the recovery of the critically ill patient and increase the risk of skin breakdown and, of course, poor wound healing. So who is at risk? Well, it's exactly those patients that you would think are at risk. Uh, the chronically debilitated patient, such as those with cancer, alcoholism, chronic disease, those that go prolonged periods without eating, and those with significant nutritional losses. For example, some type of uh, chronic diarrhea where they're losing a lot of their nutrition uh, through their enteropathy. So what about albumin? Why not use albumin? Well, albumin, albumin is not an ideal marker for nutrition for a few reasons. One, it has a real long half-life, 20 days, and thus changes slowly with interventions, is harder to follow in real time, and albumin is affected by hydration and renal function. Pre-albumin is considered more the preferred protein marker. It has a short half-life, only two days. So it really tells you what has been happening really recently with your patient. It's been suggested it could be followed twice weekly to watch for changes associated with your interventions. And it's a le has less effect, excuse me, in liver disease, has less, less effect on it than other serum proteins. It uh, has a high essential to non-essential amino acid ratio, and that also makes it a distinct marker of protein synthesis, and it's not affected by your hydration status. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't limitations, because there are. There are some limitations we need to be aware of when ordering a pre-albumin level. Uh, first, it's a negative acute phase reactant. So acute phase reactants go up with inflammation. This is a negative acute phase reactant, and thus the level will decrease in patients with inflammation as well as right after surgery. So that patient who has an infection, some inflammatory process, we would expect the prealbumin level can go down. It can also decline in malignancy, cirrhosis, with enteropathies associated with protein loss, as well as zinc deficiency, so we need to be aware of that. Other things can cause it to rise, like acute alcohol intoxication, so you may need to wait, say, a week after some big acute drinking binge, and uh, a rise may also occur with prednisone therapy and, pro progestinol, excuse me, and progestational agents can also rise, uh, cause a rise. So how does it change with time? So prealbumin drops about 14 days. You'll see a drop uh, after starting a low-protein diet that only gives you about 60% of your required protein. It's actually recommended that prealbumin should rise about 2 grams per deciliter per day with appropriate nutritional support. So what are the levels that should concern us? So a level less than 5 is associated with a poor prognosis. 5 to 10.9, those patients are at significant risk requiring aggressive nutritional support. And 11 to 15, those patients are at the increased risk level and need to still be monitored closely. And as I said, some recommend that it's followed uh, twice weekly. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this month's Wild World of Wounds, pre-albumin. We'll see you next month. Bye for now.